Hey guys, Mrs. Bilger here today for your social studies lesson. You'll be doing some work with 13 colonies, which is a nice little kickstart to learning about PA history. Um, coming up next is a video from Mrs. Reber. Enjoy your lesson. Hi, hey, fourth grade. So we're going to move on to a different topic for social studies. We're going to start talking about the colonial time period and get into some more details about that. So I wanted to start off by sharing this brain pop video with you that's about building the 13 colonies and how this all kind of got started. So go ahead and check out this video and then we'll talk about this at the end. Well, well, now you've, now done, you've it. done it. It says it right, here, right here, no, no skipping, skipping through town, town on Sunday, on Sunday whilst eating an ear of corn. corn. These reenactors re take, take their blue, their blue laws, laws seriously. seriously. Dear, Dear Tim, Tim and Moby, and Moby why, did why did England, England make 13, 13 American, American colonies? colonies? Wouldn't it have Wouldn't been, it simpler been simpler just to make, just one, to make big one big one? From Marlena. From Marlena. Ah, good question. Good question. Maybe England, Maybe England would have, would done, have that done that if they thought of it thought from, of the, beginning. from the beginning. But the but 13, 13 colonies, colonies weren't set up based on some well-organized well master, master plan. plan. The only real the only plan, plan England had was to get rich, rich and powerful. And powerful. A popular, a popular British, British play at the time, time described Virginia, Virginia as a paradise, paradise coated in gold. gold. Streets were Streets filled with it. Toilets were made of it. Prisoners were even bound with golden rope. Now, if you take a second and really think about that back in that time period, do you really think that this was what was happening over there? I don't think so. Of course, of course the, the place office, office had never been, been to Virginia. Virginia. But, but Europe was obsessed, obsessed with stories about riches, riches in the so-called so New World. It started with Christopher Columbus, Columbus bringing back, back news of the Americas in 1493. Then, then the race was on to snatch up all that land. land. All of Europe's powers wanted in. Spain had a head start since Columbus was working for them. In the 1500s, they grew fabulously wealthy on gold and other resources from South America. Portugal was close behind, making a fortune growing sugar cane in Brazil. Setting up colonies to get rich was part of a system called mercantilism. Governments tried to accumulate as much wealth as possible through trade. For Spain, that meant importing lots of gold and silver mined in the colonies. For other countries, it meant shipping raw materials from the colonies to the motherland. So when they talk about trade, you're going to notice in a few minutes how this really affected the colonies. This was really important back then in how they made money in places, how they got materials in different places. So pay attention to how they actually structured this trading of goods. Turning them into, into finished, finished goods, goods and then and exporting those, those goods for sale to the colonies and other nations. By the early 1600s, England, England was ready to get in on all this colonizing action. action. South, South and Central, Central America had already been claimed, claimed by then. then. So King James, King James I fixed, fixed his eye on America's, America's East, East Coast. Coast. Well, no, no people, people already, already lived there and had for thousands of years. The native, the native peoples, peoples of North America, America had their, their own civilizations and cultures. But that, that didn't, didn't stop England, England from laying claim to the, to the land. land. In 1606, in 1606 the, king the king issued a charter to set up a colony in Virginia. Virginia. It granted it a, a private company the right to settle the land. land. The company the then rented it out to English citizens to go live there. there. In, in return, return for the charter, the colony would send home a portion of its valuable resources, like gold. But well, as, it as it turned out, out there was no gold in Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> Lucky, Lucky for them, them the new, new colony soon got another, another big money maker. Tobacco. tobacco. Yeah, yeah, King James, James thought smoking, smoking was a nasty, nasty habit, habit too. too. But, but he, he didn't, didn't seem to mind all the money it made him. In the coming decades, a bunch more charters were issued for new colonies. Southern colonies like Virginia were based around farming. Besides, Besides tobacco, tobacco, they planted, they planted rice, indigo, indigo, and cotton. And cotton. Cash, Cash crops grown for profit. And since, and since they, they didn't pay the workforce, workforce those, those profits, profits were huge. huge. The, whole the whole system, system was, was built, built on, on slavery. slavery. 
people from West Africa were kidnapped, sold into slavery, and shipped to the colonies. Their journey to America was one leg in the triangular trade. So this triangular trade that they're going to talk about is really important to pay attention to how they move one thing to one part, uh, one country, and then back to another country. They sent something else back to them. So they were trading, in this case, the slaves for one other good, and then they would get money. So it keeps following this triangle. It's well, obviously why it's called the triangular trade. So pay attention to how this works and then see what they did after this first round of triangular trade. In the next, in the next leg, leg, crops, crops and, other and other raw materials from the colonies, colonies were shipped, shipped back, back to England. England. There, there, they were they manufactured, manufactured into, into goods, goods and, and shipped, shipped to Africa, Africa to be traded, traded for more, for more slaves. slaves. But it wasn't, it wasn't only, only the southern, southern colonies, colonies involved in the slave, in the slave trade. trade. Colonies, colonies to the to north, north began, began exporting, exporting rum to Africa, Africa trading, trading it for enslaved people. people. They were brought, they were brought to, the to the Caribbean islands, islands and forced, forced to work on sugar plantations. Then the, then the sugar, sugar was sent back, back to the colonies to be made into more rum. Now notice what's missing from this triangle. They weren't sending anything back to England, which as you'll see is going to cause an issue. Cutting, Cutting England, England out of the deal, deal like that was sort of against the rules of mercantilism. But the, the crown was making too much money on other colonial businesses to care. The middle, middle colonies sent grain and corn, plus livestock, livestock and iron ore. While, while New England colonies sent fish, lumber, and whale oil for lighting lamps. They also, they also built the ships to transport all of these goods. With England, England getting, getting so rich on these imports, it didn't mind that the colonies were making a little money on the side. Plus, the English were kind of busy fighting wars with France, with Spain, and even with themselves. So the colonies got used to doing their own thing and governing themselves. Each one elected a legislature, modeled on England's parliament. They debated current issues and passed laws about daily life. But their independence didn't last. Eventually, life calmed down in England, and King Charles II took over. He figured he could squeeze a lot more cash out of the colonies. So he passed the Navigation Acts, a series of laws forcing the colonies to trade only with England, which Massachusetts basically ignored. In response, Charles canceled their charter, taking away their right to self-govern. The next king, James II, cracked down even more. He took away the charters of all northern and most middle colonies and closed their legislatures. They were streamlined into a single colony, the Dominion of New England. Now I want you to take a second and think about this now. The Dominion of New England. If they had done this and thought about this from the beginning, do you think that it would have alleviated lots of the problems that they had? Having just one colony was much easier for the Crown to control. Royal, Royal troops, troops were brought in to enforce, enforce British, British law. law. And, and all churches were forced to hold Church of England services. This, this was a major problem in northern colonies like Massachusetts. Massachusetts. The Puritans who founded these places left England because they didn't like its church. Now the church was invading the society they'd set up. The colonists were furious and ready to revolt. Actually, this was almost a century before the Revolutionary War but it, it did, did give the colonies a taste of standing up to the motherland. The old colonial governments were restored, and the crown backed down. After this, England went back to the policy of salutary neglect. It left the colonies alone, assuming they'd thrive without much supervision. And that's just what they did. Their economies boomed, and populations soared. They were still loyal to England, but they got to run things pretty much on their own. England benefited too, saving the money they'd spent to keep the colonies in line. This situation worked pretty well for both sides, for about 75 years. Around then, France and England began fighting over lands out west, at which point England became very hands-on. It sent in an army to defend the colonies' land rights in the French and Indian War. England would win that war, but only after spending an enormous amount of money. To pay for the victory, it seemed only fair to tax the colonies, and tax them hard. 
and so began the build-up to the American Revolution. Well, there you go, you're a free robot. I hope you've learned a valuable lesson about... So fourth grade, that was kind of the beginning of all of this. So when after you finish this, please go to Google Classroom in this assignment and complete today's activity. And in the coming weeks, we'll have some more information and activities for you on the colonial time period.